Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching this podcast today. I have a very lively person that I want to talk to. I'm very excited to talk to this woman. Um, my guest today is Chia Vanderzam. She's a personal trainer turned political activist um, or freedom fighter or whatever you want to call her. She doesn't mind. Uh, before we bring her in, let's just take a little look at her in action. We tried to inform others and they wouldn't listen. We tried to send videos and links that were not viewed. We sent countless articles and studies that were never read. We were deleted, unfriended, belittled, banned, fired, ostracized, insulted, excluded. Yet here we stand, resolute and united, standing up for our principles, one large family. We networked, we shared information, and are becoming more vindicated each and every day, becoming more formidable as a result. Soldiers that every, every army of light wants in its ranks. We are the essence of the people who have built all cultures and conquered horizons. Look around, look around you, everybody. Next to you is a person of courage, a superhero. We have been lied to for decades by a system of rot and corruption. But these past two years, the evil has been brought into the light more than ever before. We now see clearly who is for truth and health, and who prefers the soothing lies of Big Brother over freedom? What do you think of that? That's pretty powerful stuff. So joining me now, I'm going to bring her in, Chia Vanderzoom. Hey, Hi. thank you for joining me today. Hi, I'm thrilled to be here. It's an honor to oh, be here. I'm so happy to have you. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, now, what made you get into this? Like, how, what, what, how did you... You're gonna you speak at certain events. You're gonna be speaking at more, and we can talk about yeah. that later. Uh, how did you get into this, or what made you speak up? Well, March 2020, I knew within the first week what was up. I knew, I knew exactly what was going on. Um, I have good spidey senses, as most of us do, um, and I was red pilled pretty much in 2001 by somebody about Tower Seven. Mm -hmm. And you know how it goes when your eyes are, are awake; you see everything everywhere. So. I knew, I knew in 2020 that something was going on and sure enough, I investigated a bit and saw that Gates had patents out on certain things a couple of years prior. So that started that. And then I kept researching and sending information to families and friends throughout. And then, but only two years ago, um, Rick Dignard um, hooked me up with Marcella, Stand United, for my first mm -hmm. rally and speech. So I'd never given a speech before and I was, kind of terrified, but the more you do it, the better it, easier it gets. And of course the crowds are so welcoming. It makes everything so much easier to be around like-minded, incredible people, right? Right. So that's kind of how it started with Rick. Rick got me into it and, and Marcella. And right. since then it's all just sort of things have happened a little more and more. So I'm really proud and honored to be able to be at, at a time in history where we're fighting some very spiritual um, darkness in high places. So I'm proud to be able to be with all of people like you who have really stood up and had sacrificed. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was James and Marcella um, that the eyes, I gave a speech for them too. It was just right after I'd gotten fired and the trucker convoy was in full swing. That's it. Um, yeah. And that, that was exactly me too. So yeah, and had had um, they not hosted or or organized these events, we don't have these events to go to, right? So That's yeah, right. I owe them a big uh, uh, sort of debt of gratitude for giving oh, me a yeah. platform and for and um, yeah, so just so I could spew my big mouth out, you know. <laughs> but like, but like you uh, working, um, I wasn't really awake to anything really. It was only in 2020 when I was like in the global newsroom, watching us scurry and panic and frighten people over what seemed like nothing and yeah, watching yeah. us report in a way that I'd never seen before. That's what alerted me. I didn't have any special knowledge, but you just take a moment to look around. The information is pretty easy to find, is it not? Yet we were not telling the public the information. Exactly. What, what do you think about that? It's like you said you were red pilled after Tower 7 went down for nothing. And those all look like controlled demolitions to us now. Um, yeah. What were you, um, so what, what were you thinking about what happened in 2020? When, when, it ha when it all went down, of course, the first week, all of us, we didn't quite know what was going on. But when I saw yeah. videos of, of nurses dancing in emergency rooms around the, around the world, I, yeah. and people were going there, um, you know, um, undercover good citizen journalists. I'm like, okay, that's not, 
that's not hospitals are overwhelmed with patients. Those are empty wards in, in hospitals and empty, empty emergency areas, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then just from that, and then I researched and I saw what Gates had done and said in past and, and I forget, mm -hmm. I forget, but yeah. I just, and plus all the people that I kind of know around the world, I know a few good people, we're yeah. all the same. So we're all kind of investigating together. Yeah. So we're all like, what the heck's going on? And we yeah. knew the globalists, we knew it, we knew right away. You kind of know right away. This is so yeah. weird. This is so yeah. weird that if you don't take an injection, you will be fired. Yeah. If you don't take this an injection, you you cannot go to a restaurant, movie, gym, in, uh, across the border, that type of thing. And nobody really thought how bizarre that is. Everybody just accepted it. That's what was so weird. Well, and just common sense. If people would just use common sense, but fear overrid, over, uh, what's the word, overrides common sense. Overrode it? or If right. you believe in the whole virus thing, whatever, you know, whatever you yeah. believe. A, a cold virus or coronavirus comes into your nose. And the best the best thing for it is to flush your nose out with warm salt water or, or betadine or whatever. And, and pretty much that's all you need to do and gargle now and then. But something that goes in your bloodstream has nothing to do with the immune system that protects your lungs and your and your respiratory. That's a whole separate immune system. So common sense goes, okay, well, why? They've never had a, a vaccine for cold before. Why all of a sudden do they have a, it's just common sense that people would just even, even just ask their doctor, well, how does that work? How can there, it's two separate immune systems. Yeah. But that's we too drove, much thinking, it's you know? too, Well, it could be, but we drove the fear pretty hard. And a lot of people yeah. just, just listen. They're like, something bad's happening. There's something yeah. bad. So we got, what do we need to do? Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, scaring everybody and taking everything away from them. And then saying, if you take this, it's the only way and things will get back to normal. Oh, it's oh you don't want to take it? Oh, you bad person. So oh, yeah. that's. It was a huge psychological operation going on. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. But we can't, you know, so obviously your last name is Vanderzam. It's a name that many people will recognize. And we all, we do know that you have a very famous father. Older um, people would know. The younger people might not know as much. Their parents would know of my dad more than they might. Yeah. Be your dad yeah. was Bill Vanderzam, the premier of BC yeah. from 1986 to 1991. Yeah. And, yeah. I got to tell you, when I was working at Global, I saw an interview that he did with uh, Dan Dix. So yeah. big shout out to Dan Dix for Press for Truth. And he, it was the first time I saw somebody that had some authority, a name, speaking in a way that made some sense to me. Yeah. Um, so I actually have a little clip of that. I'd like to play a little bit of that. Um, but your dad, what role did your dad play in, you guys are both pretty aware. Aware yeah. people. When he became, he was MLA, he was alderman. When I was the year I was born, 64, almost 65, I was born New Year's Eve. He was um, he was uh, alderman and then he got to mayor of Surrey and then MLA of Surrey. So he built one up the time to get to be eventual the premier. But um, it was a strange childhood kind of because I was very introverted and shy. So it was, it was, and when he was in, when I was in grade 11, I think he was minister of education. And I'm like, oh my goodness, right? So it, it was, it was, it was unusual, but I was, by the time he really got into the premier thing, I was 19, 20. So I was kind of not, in, I was more into myself. I didn't pay a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But later on, later the past few years with his um, speaking out about chemtrails, geoengineering, um, speaking out about the smart meters, speaking mm -hmm. out about a lot of things. I'm, I'm so proud of him. And now that I'm completely awake, I appreciate that he's probably been awake for most of his life as well, right? Yeah, it takes guts to speak up and you will yeah. get criticism, but he has a thick skin. He's used to that. If you're in politics or if you're any type of public person, some people are going to like you. Some people aren't going to like you. That's so, the way it goes. Yeah. That's He's the a man of faith. Like he, he has very strong faith. Yeah. As do okay. So when you've got strong faith, it's like whatever. We're, 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 kind of, we know what's right, you know? Kind of carries you through. But uh, let's take a look at a little clip from that interview with Dan Dix and your dad, Bill Vanderzam. Overreacting to 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 this thing, this virus, which has a 99.97 percent recovery rate, yet they're still mandating the vaccine passports. For example, what are what are your thoughts on just this current segregation? It's like a two tier society of of of, of the vax versus the unvax, where you have to have a mandated vax passport to take part in society. If you want to go to a restaurant, you want to go to the the bars, you want to go to the sporting events, you're going to have to get the vax pass. What are, what are your thoughts on the mandates that are coming down these days? Well, that's another thing. I think uh, a lot of people are somewhat upset and more so every day with the fact that uh, we're beginning to think maybe there's some other program. There's a different end game here. 
And I know some people would argue it's all about money. And I know there's people making lots of money during all of this. Certainly the mask makers are making lots of money. Somebody having to clean it up will eventually make lots of money. Uh, we know that the chemical companies, the pharmaceutical companies are, for, are making fortunes. And then again, uh, I, I guess there's something beyond that. Uh, I, I think uh, it's so strange that everyone has to be vaccinated. Why does everyone have to be vaccinated? And they, they'll try to get people in no matter what it takes, as you've already said. They've got various things, coercions happening to try and get people in. Why is that all? So it makes me think maybe there's another end game. And the other only end game I see is that somebody's trying to establish a reset. And our own prime minister was the first very early on to make a mistake and mentioned this in one of his press releases, that he, this was an opportunity for the great reset. That scares me. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty powerful yeah. stuff because he said a lot of things people weren't saying. That I think it was back in 2021, obviously. Yeah. 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 I thought it was the older Dine Dix from 10 years ago. Another good one. Oh, yeah. It was very that one. We're not saying those things. Why does everybody have to get this? What's going on? He even referred to, although he's probably trying not to say it, a great reset. Like these are all these buzzwords that we're all so nervous to say because we get censored. Like yeah. he said it. Like, what do you think of that? Well, he's he doesn't have anything to really lose. He's not mm. right. He can say whatever mm -hmm. he feels, as as we all should really be able to. But he doesn't have to worry about losing a job or being censored that way. So he can he can speak freely. But yeah, he, I'm very, glad he did. But yeah, yeah sure. No one no one comes near my parents with a needle. There's no way they're going to have to get through me. So they're uh, <laughs> they're yeah. healthy. they're wonderful. They're I mean they're both getting older. But um, yeah, it's it's it was he saw it right away as well. And then with me and sending him videos and articles, and we kept our, kept each other on top of all the information. So yeah, it was, it was, I'm really, really proud of him. He's 90 now, almost 90. So he's, oh, is he? Oh, yes. He looks fantastic. He yeah. Look fantastic. And you were mentioning, oh, we'll just talk about him for a little bit more. And you mentioned that in 1983, he was the minister of education. And I was just sort of doing a little research and it said he personally intervened in the Smithers school board to suspend Madeleine Sauvé without pay. Madeleine Sauvé distributed uh, without the permission of either parents or the local school board, a questionnaire concerning uh, mutual masturbation, oral sex, use of pornography and prostitution to a class of grade eight students in Smithers. Now, this is very controversial at the time because we that's were 80, getting that's 1983. And now fast forward almost 40 years later. Uh, yes, the, this school. kind of weird material gets distributed in schools and we don't even know anything about it's, it. I don't know if anything as graphic as this, but but he he personally had a hand in, in dealing with this lady. Of course, good for him. <laughs> I mean, you can't, I mean, if, if book burning was a thing back in in the Hitler's days or whatever, I'm not saying book burning, but modern day book burning for this sort of thing, we should all be storming libraries and schools and ripping books out of, I mean, what who... If we don't stand for the children, who's going to stand up for them? If parents aren't going to going to do enough of it, right? Yeah, there's so much talk now about you know this kind of sexual material being distributed in the schools Stop and me. a very soji type of material. Yeah. I haven't seen it personally in my kids' school because I've snooped them around in the library and I didn't really <laughs> I didn't really see anything too weird. But I know that oh, it is. Good certain schools yeah like maybe our district is a little bit better although they do so do do some weird things and um so anyway i was looking back i mean as you know i worked at global which was bctv back in the day and then i, I was looking up some more stuff about your dad and there was a clip i found from webster which was shot it's an old webster. show that a lot of young younger people might not know but the people our age would would remember we shot it over in studio one at bctv it was before my time yeah. but i always just love walking down memory lane and looking at old clips and this is a clip I found of Webster it's two minutes and it's he's interviewing your dad and your dad is talking about perhaps you know uh funding schools in a different way so I thought this was interesting let's have a look at this or did I hear correctly that you would like us to allocate our school taxes to public or private schools as in our choice well there's a problem with uh, going to uh, a system of pure choice 
on the basis of you allocating by choice your taxes to the institution you want that, that you Mr. want Premier. your children to attend. There's a problem with it. I think perhaps ideally it sounds great and perhaps it's something that most people could favor if all things were equal but they're not equal we don't have we have some areas where you don't have a choice because you've only got one type of system so i think if at best we could hope to try it out in one area and uh, whether it's in the post secondary system or in the elementary probably in the post secondary and again in in some region of the province where in fact there is the opportunity for oh, choice and see what that's what you would like to see you would like uh, you're going to have a test in one area where people could allocate their taxes to the religious or private school of their choice i think it would be interesting to give people the opportunity to allocate to the institution of their choice and see what the result of that i'm not saying it's going to work naturally wouldn't it smash the public school system which is already sorely starved for funds why would it if uh, if the system is effective, if it's performing the sort of function that people would expect of it, they're going to be supportive of that particular system. In other words, they can stand or fall on their effectiveness uh, among the community. I think that's uh, certainly how you attain accountability and how you see improvements develop within any system. So I don't mind a trial effort someplace, although I don't know what the area or how you do it. I'm only saying I don't have a closed mind to the idea of trying it. <laughs> cool, hey? What a handsome man, huh? He's so yes. handsome. Crazy. <laughs> so handsome. And so so refined, so elegant, you know, yeah. proper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very handsome. Man. Yeah. Whenever I see old clips, it's nice to see old clips of your dad, isn't it? Yeah. Or old yeah. pictures of your dad. You of course, every daughter thinks their dad is the most handsome man. I think oh, yeah. my, my dad was too, but it's yes, so lovely yes. to hear you say that. Yeah. yeah. And he was yeah. smart. And what's funny is Webster was sort of coming off like a curmudgeon type of guy, challenging him. And he <laughs> Webster almost seems off his, off his marbles a little bit. And your dad is like solid, saying this is how we could try this. You know, this is how we retain accountability, blah, blah, blah. You know, like. He's a smart guy, right? Yeah, it's amazing when it, when it's the person being interviewed stays just the person that might be frenetic interviewing them, but they're the person that is being interviewed is calm and measured and just answers quietly the facts and it just it has a really good um, vibe to that. That's for sure. For sure. Right. Yeah. It was, and I wish that more reporters. I wish there were more shows like that. But there's now it's podcasting has sort of become like that. But yeah. I wish more yeah. reporters were taking people to task because I'm sure the media, oh, well, the media used to take people to task. They just don't anymore if it doesn't suit the narrative, right? No, um, I know. It's sad. It's really sad. It is, it is sad. And, you know, yeah. you certainly seen, watched your dad have his fair share of, a, of a, having a go with the media, but that's how it was. And that's how it should be. Yeah. yeah. Challenge. And what have absolutely. you. Yeah. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, they were a little bit hard on him just because of his views were not as liberal as liberal type. But, yeah. you know, that's that's all part of it. So, you know, you take it with take with it what you will and do what you can. And, right. Yeah. You, you just. Yeah. You, well, but, yeah. So yeah. let's yeah. come back to let's uh, catch up today. Let's get some of your thoughts on what's going on in the world today or particularly in B.C. Um, first, I want to ask you about before we um, let what Bill 36. Why don't you give our, our listeners and viewers the, the, the 411 on Bill 36? Because, you know, a lot of people, the, the media doesn't cover it. And a lot of people don't really know, including people that work in healthcare. So could you just give us a brief thing of what it is and what, what do you think about it? Okay. First of all, let me just say one thing. If people really yeah. want to see a good video about Bill 36 on yeah. February 29th at a Campbell River Council meeting, um, two doctors were given five minutes to speak. But it was so powerful for the first time probably in history, they went to 30 minutes and they okay. just, they showed all these council people a big binder full of Bill 36 that was passed in the middle of the night almost with hardly any medical um, assistance, anyone giving input from the medical community. Um, at independentbc.ca that we're working on for independent candidates, it says on the, um, I think it says just us or contact us or something, you can see the the video there and what we're all doing right now is we're trying to email um a, a copy you cut and paste it to every municipal municipality in british columbia there's 161 of them i believe the the video 
um, so people mm -hmm. are aware of what Bill 36 is. That's what we're trying to do at independentbc.ca. So people go there, see mm -hmm. the video, send a letter for five minutes it takes you to save your, your municipality about your health care for your children. And what Bill 36 is, is I don't know exactly every detail, but what we do know of it is it takes away the, the sacred doctor-patient relationship. Um, your doctor and, and the patient, it, it should be sacrosanct what, what is told between you and your doctor. But now the government can come in and if the doctor gives you advice as a patient that goes against what their narrative is, they can be fined, 200000 I believe it is. They can be imprisoned for six months or more, or they can have their license removed just for doing I thought first do no harm was a thing. But if say, say for example, a doctor said ivermectin, look at what Dr. Hoff and Dr. Mackis and other ones had to go through. They have their licenses removed and they've been, not I think they're allowed to practice fully completely anymore at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that takes away any any proper health care. I mean, say, say your child was vaccine injured from a childhood shot mm -hmm. and they want to get help from the doctor. The doctor would want to give, say, maybe take extra vitamins or vitamin D or this sort mm -hmm. of advice they would be banned or fined. You can't, yeah. that's not a medical system. That's not, a, that's not what doctors are supposed to do. They're supposed to help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis with your own personal situation, not what the doctor says or what the big pharma says, big pharma, right? Right, it's, right. It's, I don't if you were, yeah. Well, sorry, yeah, if you were injured by something and then the doctor says, look, I think you need to stay away from this something, then they could get into trouble if, if, if somebody reported exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. and they would lose everything. Exactly. And, so it's, 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 people do not realize. And that's why you could ask any, we, a year ago, Rick Dignard and, and Sal on the corner of some in Vancouver, I forget where it was for two months, they tried to recall Premier David Eby. So uh -huh. in by recalling him, they could rescind this bill 36, but the people of Vancouver, they were, they didn't have a clue about it. And they thought Eby who wasn't even elected was doing great. People have no clue. So they look at they look at you with like you've got two heads when you talk about Bill 36 and they don't understand. So if we can get if we can get this letter that you cut and paste and copy to all the councillors, it tells you where the council is, you can find out where the information is, it takes five minutes. Every every city council in British Columbia could have a copy of this video and learn about Bill 36. Maybe we could make a difference. We can't just sit around and not do anything. Yeah, and because it affects um Naturopaths, osteopaths, yes. uh, acupuncturists, physiotherapist, chiropractor, everybody. Yeah. Chiropractor and naturopathy, those two medicines, they're, they're health saving. They can save your life. Absolutely. Medicine and naturopathy. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, More than just maybe a doctor, not to put down absolutely. doctors, but writing a prescription. Maybe yeah. sometimes a prescription isn't what you need. Yeah, maybe you need yeah. a change in your diet. Maybe you need a little. Yeah, well, they're great for broken limbs, you know, broken arm or leg or surgery, but for overall systemic health care naturopath is is i mean if you're able to save money and go once a year or whatever some people yeah. do yeah. You, you've got it that that's and even now they're gonna be muzzled right the bill 36 attacks them because they have to take whatever forced yes what you might call it can you imagine being a naturopathic doctor and with your family and being told you have to be as a naturopath and not taking a shot never ever having put anything like that into your body before and you're eating healthy and you're trying to do the best I mean, yeah. that, that goes Personally against no, a naturopath going through this and she would never, ever take yeah. this thing. Yeah. And yeah. look at the threat that's on her head. And she works her butt off saving people, helping people. So, I know. And David Eby could do what? He could rescind this. Could he not? Or, um, I, I don't know exactly what could happen. If enough if enough people um, would know about it and all the council members might somehow could make a difference. I don't really know. I'm clumsy on speaking about that. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is we get people's attention to it and maybe enough people could rise up. I mean, they're, they're rising up against a few things, but this is healthcare for your family. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is, this is what communists, communists even have better healthcare system. Yeah. Than. yeah. Our it, healthcare it, system it, is deteriorating rapidly because of this, because we have so many healthcare workers not working, doctors, nurses, yeah. paramedics, what have you. I you mean, know. people are having rallies and riots and, and speeches about in, in Vancouver about stuff that's happening in other countries that they left behind to come here. Maybe have a rally and join us. And we have a rally about what's happening right here to yeah. your country that you came to for your family. Not yeah. what's happening over across the pond somewhere. Yeah. I mean, 
Well, I'm for everything. I they I feel people can do whatever rally however they want, but you're well, right. They can, There's but I mean going on yeah, here. Yeah. 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 I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, Dad. No, I but but people don't know about it, and that's the fault. I mean, everything going on is the fault of the media not doing their job and yes. reporting. And and yeah. you know, I, I didn't know back then years ago how bad we were and how everything all sort of controlled events lead to controlled newscasts yeah. almost yeah. like I didn't know that I'm uh, and I was in it I was just yeah. in the system thinking we were just doing what we're doing journalism because we did do normal local journalism at, at the time right yeah. we did yeah. um but if the network or our affiliates told us to cover an event we covered the event, the event as the narrative was explained and we didn't question like 9-11 or anthrax or whatever <laughs> or all the things all the things that when you look back you're like eh, maybe this isn't the way it was but but yeah so it's yeah. the news not doing their job because they're in the pocket of the liberal government and they they will be wrecked they are ruining their own reputation are they not oh yeah well everybody just pretty much now here's a headline and we all go oh yeah okay sure sure it is yeah right sure yeah. right we, we don't know what to believe it they cry wolf so many times we don't know what's truth what's lies if we're being manipulated coerced yeah, and they yeah. shave and they slant things, and and then it just leaves people not knowing um, yeah, yeah. what the truth is, and or or you just don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they built that. I mean, they that's you reap what you sow. If they're going to do that to the public and gaslight us, eventually we're going to be like, yeah, well, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to believe you anymore. Yeah, let I'm me get your. It. Yeah. I know. So, well, OK, at least we're bringing attention to that. Now, let me get your thoughts on what just happened yesterday about the carbon tax. So the carbon tax non-confidence vote did not go through. Pierre Polyev tried. At least he got some media attention saying, you know, we 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 want to ax this tax, this carbon tax, which comes April 1st, which will be another 23 percent on on top but i think it's it's even on your gst and then extra tax on top of that right like it's, it's something like that but it's listen people cannot afford this um first of all what do you think about this what they're doing to us driving us into par poverty and what can we do about it i know yeah okay well, what do you part, think it's part of the overall agenda and, and then of course this carbon tax will increase food prices because trucks have to bring the food and they mm -hmm. have gas right Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to increase the price on everything. They're just that's what they're doing. They're trying to make the cost of living almost impossible for people to get by. They they want to have the food prices, the gas prices. They want uh, the rent to be higher. They want people not to be able to own their homes anymore. So property tax is going up. Um, home insurance is going up. Everything is being raised that people are just pulling their hair out. They just they, I don't know how, I don't know how some people or young couples starting out would get by. Yeah. So the agenda is clear. And a lot of people still don't completely see it, but more and more are when it when it actually hits them right in their pocketbook or, or it hits them directly, right? But I don't know what what to do about do you, it. People, do you people think that young that. people are are very much? Um, I find that sort of younger generations, some of them are quite scared about. Oh, we're ruining the planet. Like the people that follow Greta Thunberg type of type of people. Maybe they've been taught that. When yeah, really we yeah. need carbon in the atmosphere. Plant life will die if we don't have carbon. Well, greenhouses pump it into green. There, when the greenhouse pumps it in for greater crops, that tells you something that how important it is. And the more volcanic activity there was thousands of years ago, the greener the planet was. I mean, it's yeah. it's very it's it's great stuff, but they need to demonize <laughs> it because they can they can weaponize it. They demonize yeah. and they, right, then they can control. So it's all a matter of just getting their claws deeper into every area of our life. So climate change is the next big hoax. They're going to be keep pushing that. So no, it's on every yeah. product. It's on yeah. everything. Yeah. Green. Yeah, I bought some toilet paper the other day, and it's like, oh, this is carbon neutral. Oh, is it? Yeah, did it no, come no. by truck? Did it to the Walmart? <laughs> Well, how did it get there? How can it possibly be carbon neutral? And being yeah. carbon neutral isn't a good thing. And if people keep seeing that on packages, granola bars, or whatever, yeah. you're going to be thinking, I'm doing something bad. Yeah, and, exactly. And you're not. No, you're Meanwhile, not. Like, Trudeau can take these Jamaican vacations and use, what did he use? He used 1 million tons of emission on that Jamaican Christmas vacation, which I think oh, wow. is more than what five people would use in a year or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the number is on that. But Crazy. is he paying carbon tax on that? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Now, you reminded me of something 
interesting about the carbon tax like we don't have refer referendums we don't vote on anything as as the public but i remember we're like now tell me a little bit about the hst the um your father had a hand in getting rid of that uh, just so tell me a bit yeah, about that. that i think it was 14 or 12 13 years ago now um mm -hmm. it was 20 years around 20 years out of politics but i guess he got wind of what i don't i don't know how to explain exactly what it was but it was basically a um a power move, a power grab, a wealth dis redistribution of taking money from the poor, like they always do, and redistributing it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it was. Um, and he and Rick and Sal and a bunch of other incredible men, they went across British Columbia. They had two months, I believe, to 90, 90 days, to, um, to get as many signatures as possible. And British Columbia was on fire. And they've, they got the most signatures for any petition in history. And they prevailed and um it was i think i think uh, premier campbell had to resign a little bit after that for some reason if it was for that or they ended up getting rid of it right the harmonized yeah. sales, tax, sales yeah. tax which was putting i think pst and gst together yeah. Yeah. It, it, would have, it would have ended up we would have been paying i know it seems impossible at this point that we do pay so much for that already but it actually would have been even more at this point if that had gone through so we were saved a little bit of grief from it but yeah. um but just but, the fact that the the power of the people coming together, it was a huge movement, huge. And you don't even see that in, in general elections. But people were riled up and uh, my dad got everybody fired up. And, uh, it was incredible, <laughs> yeah. incredible thing. And they got rid of it. They obliterated it, right? And went back to PST, GST. And I think I think it was a bit cheaper or something. I, I Yeah, but, but the thing is they voted. They didn't want it. So go away. So yep. get rid of it. So we're going to vote. We should be able to vote on the carbon tax. We don't want it. But there's yes. no thing in place for us to do that. And wow. we're the people. We pay the government. I know. It's, I, it's, it's, I, I can't understand. I, I honestly don't. I can't answer that. I How we got here. Yeah. yeah. I, I just shake my head. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'd have to ask your dad. <laughs> he probably dad, told yeah. us. <laughs> He could he could start this up again for us. Like we don't want this stuff. We 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 want to we want to reset this, but not in the way they want to reset but this. That's why I want to start a grassroots movement, and that's why I'm encouraging people go to to email every every um, municipality in British Columbia because that's a grassroots movement. The power of the people coming together, emailing. It's easy to do five minutes from your home, and then every council member will be aware of what bill the government is trying to do or has passed. Mm -hmm. And if, but if nobody knows about it, how are, how is everyone going to speak out about it? Right? No one knows about Bill Thirty Six. Yes. No one. Yes, yes. It is. It's up to us. But it's hard, even because even when we Google and Wikipedia things, there's yeah. I don't trust. I know. It's hard to know where to go. I, I would know. recommend going to people's people that you trust and their Substacks. Um, I yeah. would recommend sort of finding things out on other search engines other than Google. Yep. I would try to go to Rumble for certain videos, like, you know, yeah, yeah that, so I just don't think they're going to get away with this again, because no. even the people that don't speak up, the, the, nor the normies, they are injured. I know it because I talk yep. to them. Yep. I see them in the workplace. Yep. And now they they are more people are switched on. Nobody's going to do this again. So if, if, say, another pandemic comes or like, you know, some sort of ridiculous thing, they're going to call an emergency. They'll just call. They'll just call whatever they want. And the media will follow it. Carry the water. Emergency. Do yeah. you think I think that people won't listen? I would say, like, like I say, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. I would say a percentage, yeah. same, a huge percentage will. But another chunk of people have woken up and they, they're like, no, not, not on my watch this time. So another thing I just wanted to talk about, cause I didn't have time to do a video on this either. And I wanted to, I was quite fascinated by the Tucker Carlson Putin interview. And he got in a lot of trouble. But how dare you even go in the, over there and talk to him? Mm -hmm. What you're not supposed to talk to someone as a reporter. Did Bar Barbara Walters not go talk to Castro? It's not. <laughs> I'm I like, know. It's 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 just again. If, I mean, a lot of it is theater, but um, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, how did Putin when, come off to you? What did you make of him? Uh, um, he was he was. I thought he was he was he was very intelligent. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't know a lot about um his past history per se, mm -hmm. but um I know a lot of people we laugh about it. We're saying when you know you're in trouble when you live in Canada, but you're thinking Russia looks like a better place to live. <laughs> that's that's a big like matzo ball out there of a change. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But um, 
I, I do like about Putin. He's got some in his country. He upholds some good good moral values. I mean, I know I know he's been a killer in the past, or he's been um what do you call? Who hasn't? Him? So has our. So have yeah. the president. So have we. But yeah. he 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 does seem to keep. And he isn't it? Is it Poland or Russia? Yeah, Russia, where they if you have a few children, they reward you fiscally. Mm. I think it's Russia. So it's trying to you know get their family strong and. and reward those that have children so they're not struggling and so there seems a lot of things that he does that seem really pro-family pro-prosperity um i think he resonated with people because he was so nationalistic i guess and and he was you're right he was very intelligent and and we could like biden could he be interviewed for two hours (laughs) that's his nap he couldn't stay awake that long (laughs) what what about uh like kamala harris could she interview to that standard? I doubt. I doubt. I doubt it. But remember, they're just they're just placeholders. Like pretty much, Obama's in charge, and then his he's the puppet of the other ones above him. But I mean, he's got a, a mansion a few blocks from the White House. Um, he's got his same staff that he had when he was. You know, he's he's basically living out his third term right now. Obama? Oh yeah. I didn't know this. Oh, he's got a mansion just a block from the White House. Oh, and he's definitely. always oh yeah he just went to england the other day they shot yeah. the camera and now he's he's doing everything he's got a staff and and he even he bragged to some reporter um an interview saying yeah in a perfect situation i could have an earpiece in the in the present and i could be telling him what to say and they laughed about it oh, but yeah. uh, that was reality that was true so hmm. oh, yeah, he's running the show and he's got all his same staff they're running the show Oh my goodness, you just reminded me that the Obamas, I think they produced that Netflix documentary about the end of the world or something like that. I forget, not documentary, it's a movie type of thing. Yes. And Julia Roberts is in it and blah, blah, blah. And it's it's this kind of this dystopian thing that's happening. So I guess, and they helped produce that. Now, why is that? Were they trying to tell us something? Well, they've got against, they've got their claws again into a lot of different things. They're very, very, very wealthy now. He started out as president. He didn't have a lot of money. But uh, they always leave politics with a ton of money, whereas Trump, no matter what you think of Trump, he was very wealthy going in and we knew where his money came from. But when you go in as president, not wealthy, and you leave with millions and millions, it's like, really? Hmm. Yeah. Right? Like like Biden, who's your who's paying you? Who's influencing you? Who's well, we know we know. I mean, you can't hide yeah. these things anymore, but the media tries to spin and hide it. But, yeah. we know we know what's going on, but. It's just, uh, it's frustrating to see evil get rewarded continually over and over and over. But they picked the two worst bobbleheads to represent the, the U.S. Like you couldn't, you couldn't find anybody stronger. And like, maybe, do you, do you think Michelle Obama will run? Well, apparently the other week, a couple of weeks ago, she said no. But then mm. apparently someone else was talking about, this is all conjecture, of course, that at their convention, there's a, you, you can all of a sudden put someone in at the last minute. So mm. never say never completely about her, which would be good for them and not good for them because not a lot of people like her, but enough might, might. Um, mm. But I even question if there'll be an election. I mean, they're not going to Trump. I mean, he's, he's, these rallies are packed. There's, there's passion for him again. Yeah. He's, never know. He's, he's clearly the guy, but then people don't yeah. trust him fully either. You know, know, we're like left not trust. Like, I like the things that Pierre Polyev says, but then, you know, can we totally, tr- who can you trust? What's going on? Who's going to, you know, no one's going to come and save us, I don't think. No, right? I mean, if he's, if, if Poly, Poly, how do you, I never say his name, Polyver, if he's a member of the WEF, I don't know. I don't know what the globalists Well, he said he denounces that and, and well, will that that nice. not support them and will not have anyone working for him that that was in the wef so or he wants to have nothing he's okay. disassociating himself so he said okay. that well if he, if he means it and then and he doesn't it's not that's not just talk then yeah that would be amazing but you just we just don't know until we see actions not words yeah yeah all about that's, what they do not what they say and, and you know. yes because he does support sending money to ukraine still which i, oh, I, I don't agree with that anymore. no that's money laundering no no mm-hmm. yeah yeah and you know, also yeah. like you know we send all the money there. Didn't something terrible just happen in Haiti? Like Haiti, they the it was overrun by gangs or whatever criminals and what have you. I don't hear anything about sending money to Haiti. We don't care about those people. It's not. No, we don't. You know, that's got they they can just have their country run rampant, and we don't want to send aid to any sort of you know. No. What, they don't have anything we want. No, so I know. 
No, I know, I know. Just goes Ukraine is a very it's a corrupt area of the world. Wonderful yeah. people there, but the government, of yeah. course, the other countries, good countries, yeah. but the government is is corrupt, right? Yeah. It's their little satellite state, Ukraine. They that's their playground, yeah. I think, yeah. for the for the elites. I know. And so yeah. many good people there. It's just so sad that they have to live in their country and watch it be destroyed from within. Yeah. You know? And that's the fault like of country. Yeah, like like us, just like us too. So so Chia, I know you're gonna be speaking again. Are you you're doing you now what now tell me about that? Where mm, when is that happening? Uh April fifteenth, I believe. I'm not sure. I think in, in Robson Street again. I'm not hundred percent sure. But yeah. uh, so Dr. Hoff will be there as well, and James and Marcella and, and other good speakers. So oh. I, I just I just stand, I'm humbled to be there because I'm not I'm not anybody like these people are. I'm just a politician's daughter, or was a politician's daughter, who who uh, has to speak out and um, can't stand by and watch this go on when there's people like you and Dr. Hoff who actually have suffered financially, oh. everything that's happened to you guys. So I just yeah. am so humbled to be amongst people like you guys because oh. it'll, be, it'll be April 15th anyway. So hopefully the weather won't be raining and it'll be sunny and yeah. hopefully we'll get a good turnout and, and yeah. yeah. yeah well, I'll come down. I love coming in and, and being with my little tribe. Being amongst like-minded people because we're all in the same wavelength and it's just, it's just, it's just, you get out of the crazy, crazy world and all of a sudden you walk into a little area on the street and you're in this bubble. Yeah. A bubble of people that are awake and intelligent and bright and kind and normal, yeah. right? And then you leave that little bubble and go back again in the world. But in that little <laughs> moment in time, for 15, 20, 30 minutes to an hour, whatever, two hours, you get to be with, yeah. Yeah. And it is pretty, pretty damn awesome, I got to say. It sure is, Yeah. Well, Chia, Vanderdam, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really, really enjoyed this. I have to chat with you again. Maybe we'll do do something again in the future. Okay, I love you. Yeah, it was so great to meet you. Say hello to your dad. If he ever wants to talk to me, hey, you know where to find okay. me. Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>